All right, so now that we've done a lot of sort of complicated derivatives, we're gonna take a step back and do the derivative of something easier, okay? So let's take the exponential function, f of x equals e to the x, right? What we'll show in this video is that the derivative of this function, f prime of x, is again e to the x, okay? So this is a special function whose derivative is exactly the same as the original function, okay? So let's show why this is the case. Why is this true? So let's start from the limit definition of the derivative, right? So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, right? So this h here is taking the place of delta x, which I've done in these limit definitions before. If I call it h, it, it's the same thing, right? It's the step away from x, and then here's the average rate of change between x and x plus h for our function f. Okay, so then let's plug in what our function is, right? It's e to the x. So this gives us limit as h goes to zero of e to the x plus h minus e to the x divided by h. All right, and then we'll use uh, rules about uh, exponentials and exponents to turn e to the x plus h into e to the x times e to the h. All right, so this is just basic rules of exponents. e to the x plus h becomes e to the x times e to the h, and minus e to the x, all that over h. Okay, and then let's do e to the x times one to make this nice and clear. All right, so on the top here, on both sides of this subtraction, we have a factor of e to the x. So we can factor that out. So we get limit as h goes to zero of e to the x times e to the h minus one over h. Okay. And now note that e to the x doesn't depend on h, right? There's no h that appears here. So I can pull it out of the limit without changing anything about the value of this limit. So this is the same thing as e to the x times the limit as h goes to zero of e to the h minus one over h, okay? And here's where we're stuck, right? If I tried to plug in h equals zero, what happens, right? I've simplified this pretty much as far as I can. Let's try to plug in h equals zero. I get e to the zero minus one over zero, which gives me one minus one over zero equals zero over zero, which is bad, right? I can't say this goes to infinity or negative infinity because it's zero over zero, right? And I certainly can't say that it's zero or anything like that. Okay, so we can't just plug in h equals zero, can't simplify it anymore, so we just have to look at a table of values and see if we can just kind of guess what the limit of this function is, okay? So if we do that, let me grab this table that I wrote down earlier so I don't have to spend a few minutes writing it down, but basically, this is just a table of values. Whoops. Let's put it here. All right, and for some reason, we messed up the first row of this table. Let's change that. So we have our step size h, e to the h. So at h equals one, e to the h is 2.718, right? That's just e to the one, so this is just e. 2.718 dot dot dot. Subtract one to get the numerator. This gives me 1.718 dot, dot, dot. And then divide by h to get the value of the thing in the limit, right? This is function inside the limit. Okay, so at h equals one, this is about 1.1718 dot, dot, dot. Right, as I make the step size smaller, right? h equals 0.1. e to the h is e to the 0.1, which gives me 1.105 dot, dot, dot. Subtract one, you get 0 0.105 dot dot dot, and that's pretty close to 0 0.1. So when I divide them to calculate the function inside the limit, I get 1.052, right? So pretty close to one. If I make my step size even smaller, right? I'm getting closer to zero, making that h equals 0 0.01. E to the h is closer to one, right? 1.010, subtract the one, you get a pretty small number, 0 0.01. Divide by h to calculate the function value inside that limit at h equals 0 0.01 that function is 1.005 make h even smaller get even closer to zero right so we're getting closer to h equals zero as we go down this table 
And then these values should approach the limit value, right? Limit value, right? So at 0 0.001, e to the h is 1.001 dot dot dot. Subtract one, I get 0 0.001 dot dot dot. And if I do this uh, division here, I get 1.0005, right? So what does this table suggest that the limit is? Right, the table suggests that the limit of h goes to zero of this function, e to the h minus one over h. The table suggests that the limit of this is equal to one, right? Which would mean, right, that our f prime of x, which again, by the last step of, of this process here, was e to the x times this limit, right? So e to the x times limit as h goes to zero of e to the h minus one over h is equal to e to the x times one, which gives me e to the x, which I said was the derivative, right? And so you might be thinking that this is kind of magical and, and you know, why, why, why did this limit work out to one? Well, I mean, I we calculated it and that's just what it came out to, right? So, so the question maybe isn't why does this equal one, but what, where did e come from, right? So where does, you know, E equals 2.718 dot, 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 right? It's this weird irrational number. Where does it come from? Well, it comes exactly from here, right? E is defined by this limit, right? It is the number that solves this equation and makes this limit equal to one, right? So E is the particular number that makes this limit equal to one, right? Right, so it's defined by, you know, f of x is equal to its derivative, basically, right? So f of x equals e to the x has derivative e to the x because e is the special number for which this is true, right? Is the special number, the special, you know, base power for which this is true. Right? So, you know, what does this mean in terms of, you know, the function? What does it look like? So let's switch over to the function. So open that up and open that up. Okay, so here we have e to the x in red. So this is our function. It's also the derivative, right? Because the derivative and the function are the same thing. So what does it mean for it to have the same derivative as the exact function? Well, it just means that the height of this function is equal to the slope of that function at that point, right? So at x equals zero, the height of the function is one, right? e to the zero equals one. And also the slope at that point, right? The instantaneous rate of change or the tangent lines slope at this point, x equals zero, the slope of that point is e to the zero, right? So the slope and the height of the function value are the same. That's all it means, right? And so then at x equals one, let's say, the height is, the height of this function is e to the one at x equals one, right? So here, height of the function is e to the one at x equals one, and that's also the slope of the function at that point, right? So the slope, and the value are the same at this point, right? And then at x equals minus one down here, right? The value of the function at this point is e to the minus one, and the slope of the function at this point is also e to the minus one, okay? And so a consequence of this is that e to the x as a derivative is always positive, right? It's always sitting above the x or the y equals zero line, right? And then it's always going up that way, right? So because the derivative is always positive, the function e to the x is always increasing, right? If you look at the function, it is always increasing. And that's a consequence of its derivative always being positive. Sorry, that's my cat's getting fed in the background. Okay, so let's write some of that stuff down. Uh, let me switch back. Right, so uh, f prime of x equals e to the x is always positive, right? 
which is the same thing as f of x equals e to the x, is always increasing. Right? From left to right, as x is increasing, e to the x increases. And so that's kind of uh, a consequence in either direction, right? If f of x equals e to the x is always increasing, it means the derivative is always positive. If the derivative is always positive, then that means the function is always increasing. Okay? So you might be wondering, are there any other functions that have this property? Functions for which f of x is equal to f prime of x. Right? Are there any other functions whose derivative is the exact same as the original function? And it turns out the only other functions that have this property are multiples of e to the x, right? So f of x equals 2 e to the x, right? If you think about this, the derivative f prime of x is equal to 2 times the derivative of e to the x, right, by the constant product rule. Right? I just leave the 2 alone and multiply it by the derivative of this function. Derivative of that function, though, right, that is 2 times e to the x. Right? So this is exactly f of x. Right? So for any f of x equals some constant c times e to the x, the derivative f prime is also c times e to the x, which is f of x. Right, so only multiples, constant multiples of e to the x, and I guess sums of them, right, would give you the uh, the same function that you started with when you take its derivative. Okay, and so that's what makes e special as a number.